In this podcast, I'm going to take you through some techniques to deal with aggregate data. In the previous podcasts, I've talked about granular data when you've got a lot of detail on individual payments or individual people or crimes. Um, I've also talked about preparing the data and the difference between granular and uh, aggregate data. So if you haven't watched those screencasts, please do first. In this podcast, as I said, we have some aggregate data. This is staffing by university across the UK. Now, we've cleaned up this data, so we've gotten rid of the extra headings that uh, are only going to confuse Excel, and we've gotten rid of empty rows. The key problem here is we've got two sets of data. We've got staffing in 2011-2012, and we have got staffing from 2007 and 2008. And this is quite typical of aggregate data because if you have aggregate data, there's not a lot of detail within it and you're more likely to be looking at comparing the most recent aggregate data with previous aggregate data. So last year's, last month's or perhaps five years ago. In this case, we're going back four years to the oldest staffing data that is provided. So... We've cleaned it up. Um, we can look at the headings again. The first thing you should do with any data, we've got a university column. We should probably add university to that. Um, in the more recent data, we have some extra details. We've got some institution codes. So I'm going to make sure we've called it exactly the same as well. So we've got institution. The figures are very similar. We've got full time part-time and total academic staff, we've got non-academic staff and we've got atypical staff. The one column that's missing from their more recent data is simply all staff. Now we can create that data ourselves by creating a sum, a, a function. And that's the first basic type of data manipulation you might want to do. So we're going to create a new column for this data and we're going to put it in the same place. We're going to put it between the institution column and the column showing full-time staff. So right click on the top of the heading you want to um, insert next to and click insert. And this will create a new column to the left of the column that you selected. To resize that column, just hover over the border between two columns and you'll get a symbol like this, a, a black line with a double headed arrow across it. And you can click and drag that to move it. You can also double click to automatically resize to the longest element. So let's just resize this back here. Um, this is going to be called all staff. So make sure we give it a heading. And in our first cell, we can do the calculation. Now what we need to check here is that we're not double counting anything. And that's a particular danger with this data because here we have full-time staff, part-time academic staff, and total academic staff. So the total here is actually these two figures added up. So if we were to add all three of these up, we would actually get twice what we should be getting because we're adding up the full time and the part time and then all of them all over again. So to get a figure for all staff, we can ignore the full time and part time column. We just want the total of the full time and part time academic staff plus the non-academic staff plus the atypical. And to do that, there are two possible ways. Firstly, when you're typing a formula, which is going to do a calculation, it always has to begin with equals. Equals tells Excel that you want to perform a calculation rather than you want to directly enter raw data. So the equal sign tells it it wants to perform a calculation. And in this case, as in many cases, there are a number of ways we can actually do the same calculation. The simplest is to go equals this cell, H2, plus that cell, I2, plus that cell, J2. Now, H2 is the column H, 
and the row 2. Likewise, I2 is column I, row 2. J2 is column J, row 2. So this is going to add the values in each of our cells, H2 plus the value of I2 plus the value of J2. And that gives us 3,290. That's the simple way of doing it, but it's also a, a slightly long-winded way of doing it. There's a quicker way, which is to use what's called a function. Now, a function is a word that basically performs a set of instructions. I'll show you what I mean. If I type equals again, but this time type sum, sum is a function that will add up all cells that you specify all the numbers in those cells. Now, because it's a function, all functions have ingredients in brackets. So after the function, I need to open a bracket and tell it the range of cells that I want it to add up. In this case, I can click and drag from H2 across to J3. Sorry, H3 to J3. And just to go through that again, I click on the first cell and then hold down the mouse and drag to the last cell before letting go. Now, in this case, it's done it twice, so I'm going to start again. Click and drag there. So you'll have something that looks like that. Equals sum, open brackets, H3 colon J3. H3 colon J3 means from H3 to J3 all the cells in between those two. And sum will add up all the numbers in that range. Press enter, and I've got the result of that particular calculation. If that seems a little bit complex, then look online for guides to the sum function. So how to use the sum function in Excel. Um, search on YouTube if you prefer videos. Search on Google if you prefer text guides. And find one that suits you. But even if you don't do that, you can use the simpler formula to perform the first calculation. Once you've done that calculation once, you don't have to type it again and again for every single line because you can just copy this down. And you can copy it in a number of ways. You can just do Control and C to copy it and then paste it in the cell below. And you'll notice when you paste it, it recreates that formula, but for the next row. So whereas it was H3 to J3 in this cell, when you paste it one row lower, it will do it for that row instead. So these cell references will change when you paste them in different places to make sure that it is a relative calculation. Um, that's because Excel assumes you don't want to perform exactly the same calculation twice. You want to perform it for that row. Now, that only pastes into one cell. If you want to copy it down a whole row, the quick way of doing this is to hover over the bottom right corner of your cell, and you'll notice this white cross changes to a black cross. When it changes to the black cross, if you double click, it will copy that formula all the way down this data until it hits an empty cell to the left. So the first empty cell here is in row 166. And as soon as it gets to there, it stops copying. But it's a very good quick way of copying a formula right the way down to the end of a column, as long as there's something to the left. And that means you don't have to copy and paste over and over again. You don't have to write the formula over and over again. You only have to write the formula once and then hover over the bottom right corner and double click when it becomes a black cross. Now we have a total for every single institution, about 165, 164 of them, where we now know all staff. The next step might be to find out how many staff they had in 2007, 2008 and compare the two. The problem we have is that this is in a different spreadsheet. So we need to bring it across. To do that, Go to our other data, so here's our 2007-8 data. Right click on the sheet you want to copy across. You need to make sure that both sheets are open at the same time in Excel. Right click on this and select move or copy. 
and we're going to move this into the other sheet. So I'll click on that and you will get this window. The key thing here is at the top you've got a drop down list and this is where you select where you want to move it to. So we're going to move it to the 2011-2012 data and we're going to create a copy. We, you, we could just move it but let's create a copy so we keep it in our original spreadsheet and click OK. What's going to happen is it's now going to go to that spreadsheet so we're now back in the 2011-12 spreadsheet and we've got a new sheet in here. So we've got the two sheets in the same spreadsheet but again we want to find out how much this university had four years earlier. To do that we're going to use another function called VLOOKUP and again we're going to insert a new column to do that. So right click on the top of column E select insert to create this new column and this is going to be 2007 08 staff number. Let's just double click on that to make it smaller and I'm going to zoom in a little bit so it's easier to see. Once again we start with an equal sign the lookup is the formula of a function and this is what it's going to do. The lookup is going to look for this name, this institution name in this data in this other spreadsheet and it's going to bring back the total staff in that other sheet. So in other words the total staff in 2007-2008. When you open the brackets after the lookup you'll see Excel or whatever software you're using will tell you what information it needs. This actually needs four pieces of information. The first piece is what it's going to be looking for. So the first thing you click on is the cell containing the name of the university. So I'll click on that. Then you put a comma before the next piece of information. And the next piece of information is where you're looking. It says table array. An array is a range of cells. So with this cursor still flashing, make sure you've put the cursor in, go to the other sheet and select the two columns you want, in this case A and B. To do that, click on A, hold down the mouse button and then drag across to B. You'll notice the formula is still up here in the formula box and now you've got the name of the sheet, an exclamation mark, and then the range of the cells, A and B columns, there. Click in that formula box and add a new comma. You don't need to move from this sheet because you can finish here. After the comma you're going to put what's called an index, in other words which column you want to bring back. Now this is the column in this range, in other words is it the first column, the second column, the third column in the range that you've selected, columns A and B. Now we don't want the first column back because we already know the name of the institution. What we want is the second column showing the number of staff in 2007-2008 for that institution. So I'll press 2 for the second column, add a final comma and the last thing you need to type is whether you want an exact match or the nearest match. More to the point, true or false. And the answer is always going to be false. So don't try and remember the exact details of this. Just remember that you're always going to put false if you want an exact match. Close the brackets and press enter. And if it has found an exact match, you will get the result. In this case, it's not finding any matches because there's a problem with our other data. If I go back to this data, we can see we've got this gap at the start of each institution. That is going to confuse Excel because it treats a space as a character as well. 
and you will have to delete row spaces for it to understand. So now I've deleted that space, it's found Anglia and it's found that it had 2,500 staff in 2007-2008. And that's right. So we can do the same with Aster. Delete the space, go back, and now that's working. Now, we wouldn't want to manually go through this and delete every one. So you'd need to find a way of cleaning this up much more easily, much more quickly. And there are ways of doing that which I'll cover later on. But the key point is make sure that the data does match and use the lookup to look for that name and bring the information back. I wanted to point out the error here so that you understood what might be happening when it goes wrong. Another thing that can cause it to go wrong, let's take Birkbeck as an example. You can see here Birkbeck College has a slash 8 after it. Here it has slash 10 after it. That's because there's a footnote here. So that's going to cause problems. Here we've got codes and that's going to be much easier to match against than the actual name of the institution. But because that information isn't in the older data, we can't match on that. But codes are always going to be preferable to names of organisations or people. Just to recap then, what we have here is aggregate data and how we've dealt with that is by creating calculations and using VLOOKUP to merge two sets of data from different years. Once we've done that merge, we can always perform a new calculation, which is the difference between then and now. And here it's going to be a relatively simple calculation of equals whatever the staff are now, take away whatever the staff were then. So in this case, there's been a rise of 290. At Aston, there's been a rise of 870. And you could divide that by the older figure to get a percentage increase or decrease as well. But the key points, again, if you've got aggregate data, you're probably going to want to perform some basic calculations with it. You're probably going to want to combine data from different years and perform calculations across those data. To do that, the VLOOKUP formula is particularly useful. Don't expect to learn it off by heart. Just Google VLOOKUP. Again, look for tutorials, make notes. Um, these are things that you don't necessarily have to remember off by heart, but just know that they're possible and try and remember the name of the function, VLOOKUP, SUM, and so on to be able to do that.